You know things are grim when the government hands out a $10 billion Christmas present. It's designed to help insulate us from the horrors to come, a spend your way out of trouble solution. And of course it comes after the massive International Bank Rescue Plan. All this should have eased the pain, restored some confidence. But there's yet another problem looming, global recession. That's causing the fear and uncertainty now. So what's behind this crisis? How did the poison spread from Wall Street to Main Street USA to your street here in Australia? Ellen Fanning and I have been trying to find out. I guess this started out as a hobby. Well, yeah, it was fun, yeah. But now? But now it's, <laughs> we need it to eat. You just don't need to go and spend money on, on things that aren't really all that important. So we're getting back to basics. Yes, exactly. I just need a cow now. <laughs> Gary and Jill are still smiling, but only just. The potential damage of this crisis is so great, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd is hoping a $10 billion rescue package will ease the pain. Chase the trucks all over. Was there anything in Kevin Rudd's package that might help you? I don't think so. No, I don't think no, not, so. Because not for us. No. You fall between the cracks. Yeah. You do. You earn too much. Well, we yeah. earn. We earn? <laughs> be nice to have somebody tell me I earn too much. <laughs> I'd love that. Um, mm. But because we're trying to be self-sufficient and not be a, a load on society, I guess rather than getting a gold medal, you just get nothing. Recession or depression? Uh, which one are we headed for? Unfortunately, a depression. Economist Steve Keen hates to say it, but he told us so. Three years ago, he predicted this economic crisis, the plunging stock market and falling house prices. His next tip, massive unemployment. We're at least a 10 to 15% level of unemployment. And people who think we're going to be at 5.5% at the end of next year, I think are being far too optimistic. That equates to hundreds of thousands of people. It'll crack work. a million. It'll crack a million for sure in Australia. That's devastating. Mm. The job losses have already begun. We had so many plans for the future that we now everything has to be put on hold. This week, more than 500 jobs lost in manufacturing in Victoria. Oh well, it's life, isn't it? Thank you very much. And earlier this year, 600 sacked from this Melbourne tyre factory. Among them, 53-year-old Phil Brilliant. Oh, I had to go out to work today. Yeah, not bad. He'll finish up just before Christmas. I worked there for 30 years. My dad worked there for 30 years. All my brothers and that. I like my job. I don't want to leave, you know. But unfortunately, I have to. He's always said the only way that he'd leave up at where he, he worked was if they locked the gates. Well, you yeah. know. They're locking the gate, so he, he's out. Okay. Who wants a sausage? <laughs> Phil and his wife Robin have done everything right, working hard to raise a family and pay their bills. Which one, barbecue or tomato? Oh, no, that's great. Tomato. Yeah, Mum, you want to give that to me? what she's given. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels just like home. <laughs> Yet they feel they're being punished for something they haven't done. Nice. The world financial crisis is out of your control, but yet it's punching you in the guts. It is. It definitely is. You know, like, I've always been in control of my life and that sort of thing, you know. And now you, you seem to be hitting a brick wall and you say, well, hang on, I haven't got control over this. Um, the, the rug has been pulled out from underneath my feet. Uh, where do I go? What do I do? And it's the same for Gary and Jill Bull. I just can't understand people's mentality that want to be that greedy, that, that it affects the world. Other people's greed has really cost you. Yeah, we had a plan and it wasn't very ostentation, it wasn't very big, it was pretty ordinary. And yet they've just, by their greed, mm. have just got the pin out and just burst the balloon. your money and your dreams went to, you have to come here. 
the New York Stock Exchange where the world's wealth is disappearing as each week goes by. And it's weird here. Look around. It's not just investors going by. Ordinary people are gathered as if they're watching a train wreck. A lot of them are calling for blood, as if there's not enough red ink splashed around already. One, two, three. You suck! If you missed that, they shouted, you suck, a message to the cowboy capitalists who caused the greatest financial bust since the Great Depression. This is a Old Testament quality a credit crash. Uh, this is a, a, a collapse in the global structure of finance. Uh, it happens uh, uh, mercifully every 75 to 100 years. Jim Grant saw it coming. In his respected Wall Street newsletter, he warned about merchant bankers dressing up dodgy mortgages and marketing them as gilt-edged investments. But nobody, especially those making all the money, wanted to hear that the housing bubble was about to burst. The people who did protest, by and large, weren't working at the end to see themselves vindicated. Merrill Lynch, for example, the, the fellow who headed Merrill Lynch was notorious for firing those who called the problems to his attention. The problems were there for all to see. What started out a year ago as the so-called subprime crisis quickly became a world credit crunch and then a global financial meltdown. Economies everywhere have been brought to their knees. Stock markets are gyrating so wildly, no one knows how low they'll go. In the time we've been talking, the market's gone from positive territory to negative territory. How did that happen? Well, as we just speak, it's now positive territory now. Oh, it's gone back up yeah, again? it's gone back up. Trader Jason Weisberg says no matter how much governments spend bailing out the financial system, the market can't shake off fears of wholesale recession. Stock markets, they predict where economies are going and they usually are a leading indicator. So, the market can turn here within a month, two months, three months. The economies will then turn. After that? After that. So, so world recession, yes or no? Um, I would say world recession, not long lived, but world recession. So far, Americans are feeling it more than most. Now, one in six people with a mortgage has a debt greater than the value of their home. And those homes are being sold out from under them. You know, when you've had the home and it's taken from you, it's gone or you've lost it, it's just, it's hard. It's really hard. So. You could apply for a loan and no one would ask you, by the way, do you have a job? That question didn't come up. Uh, no one asked, do you, you have an income, right? That didn't come up either. And people came to order their affairs as if for eternal prosperity. Few places are as prosperous as Santa Barbara, California. But amidst the wealth are some well-to-do people who've lost everything. Bonnie Fikes is getting ready for bed. Her home now is her car in a city car park. Like many homeowners, she used the family home to finance a mortgage on a second property. Things got tough and the bank moved in. So you're going to cash in on the housing boom? You're going to, you're I was going going to have it to, all? I was going to do that. I was thinking ahead, being wise with what I knew how to do for years. There are so many homeless now, the local council has agreed to open car parks at night in what they call the safe parking program. This is a really hard hole to crawl out of. <laughs> Worse than I believed. It's really been tough. And then to lower myself, not that I'm stuck up, but I was upper middle class. And you didn't think it would be this bad? Oh, no. Not living in a car and not, not and the, the banks having no heart and they were waiting to take my things. You know, why don't you take one of those bankers and put him in his car for about a month? I'd like him to come over here to Shoreline. It's your turn. You sleep in this car for a while. You eat stuff out of there. And, um, 
and then see how it goes. They were they were unkind. They had no mercy. Go to bed. Hundreds of thousands of working American families are slipping into poverty, and social worker Nancy Cap says more and more of them are hitting the skids. Middle class people don't know how to be homeless. They're used to having, you know, the bathroom, the shower, everything there, and now suddenly they are forced to just hit rock bottom, I mean, from such a higher level and hitting rock bottom, it's devastating to the psyche. I mean, because you just, you don't know what to do. Who did this, Mr. Grant? Who's responsible? This is one big sink full of dirty dishes, and it's not quite so clear about cause and effect. Do you think anyone will end up in jail over all sure. this? Sure. You do? Sure. Someone will go to jail. Does this still feel like America to you? No. No, it doesn't. It feels very lonely. It feels sad. I feel forgotten. Something's broken, maybe. Yeah, and I love our country, but it's, it's a horrible thing to have happen, and it's, I'm living it. But Good. I hope that it'll get better. Good luck, hey? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> The pain this crisis is causing is immeasurable. And if it's not hurting now, it will. Here in Australia, we're a little confused about what to do. Because the messages are mixed. Spend now to keep the economy going, but at the same time get rid of debt. The facts are we're in for a rough ride. More jobs will be lost. And that one asset that so many of us rely upon, our homes, will tumble in value. I think our houses are going to down, go down by something of the order of 40%. So convinced is economist Steve Keen of that prediction, he's put his own home on the market. He hasn't found a buyer yet, and the value of homes here have fallen by nearly 10% in just a month. Well, it says a lot when you, the economist, um, decides you've got to sell, or, mm. or, or selling is the smartest thing to do. Mm. Um, is that something we should all be doing? I think if anybody's in large mortgage debt, or if they've got properties, particularly investment properties that have got large mortgage debt behind them, then yes, if you can sell and get out of it now. I know I'll be accused of causing the market to plunge, but. The market's been driven up by more hot air than my cold air has driven it down by, and that's the real dilemma. How long do I have to strap myself down for? Probably about 10 years. 10 years? If that's if we're lucky. This is not a pretty experience, and it can take that long unless we take decisive action to say the previous system has failed, we have to abrogate it and start all over again. I don't even know how to do a resume. Sacked worker Phil Brilliant is also going to have to start all over again. Fish cutter, see now there's no way no, no, I can't even catch fish, let alone cut them. But if you have to, give it a go. The last time he had to look through the positions vacant, he was 19. Are you frightened? Yeah, yeah, of course I'm frightened. You know, like I've worked before in the past, you know. What frightens you? I oh, get that job. <laughs> Gary Bull has had to come out of retirement. He's now working three days a week to supplement his diminishing nest egg. When do you think you might be able to stop working for an income? I'd like to think I could work till I was 70, but that's the way we are at the moment. But if the situation doesn't improve, um, I might make it to 100. You're a great optimist. I'm sure we'll get through it. And, but if, if it means growing more veggies, if it means selling my body, well, we'll do something <laughs> to get through it. <laughs> well, let's explore that. going on the telly. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the Nine Now app.